Uh, from Sini colleagues, sorry for a technical uh, question. Shall we wait for the WUVA uh, platform to start to, to start uh, projecting the video before starting? It's already doing so. So everyone oh, who's right. connected to WUVA is already connecting. So no need to, to wait for that. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, then I think that we can start this, we can kickstart the session and um, good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to the ECOSOC Partnership Forum event on enabling multi-stakeholder partnerships for sustainable development at local level. Um, first of all, uh, a huge thanks to the colleague of to the colleagues of UNDESA that have made this forum possible and that really helped in uh, putting uh, together the logistics but also the the substance of uh, this uh, side uh, event uh, secondly a warm welcome from uh, the organizers of the event uh, UN Habitat uh, the United Nations Development Program UNDP and the local 2030 coalition these events really aims to uh, contribute to the reflection launched by DESA through the consultation, to the, to the reflection the local 2030 is bringing forward on how we can think and mainstream the work of, lo of local, or local regional governments, of local communities, of local action for the localization of the S for the implementation of the SDGs at local level, also in the future and very important events that we have in this 2022. And I'm thinking, of course, about the high level political forum and all the very important and key events uh, that will set the international community agenda. Um, but uh, let's focus on what we have today, and we have today a great panel of uh, uh, made of speakers coming from all over the world, from different levels of governments, uh, international organizations. I will introduce them um, in, in a second, but first, uh, um, a couple of uh, housekeeping rules. And um, um, first of all, as, after two years of the virtual world, please keep your microphone muted if you're not speaking and uh, your cameras off if you're not speaking so that the speakers uh, can appear on the screen. Um, the, you, you can connect to this session both through Zoom as, as, as well as through WUVA platform, the official WUVA platform that the ECOSOC is using for the partnership forum. Uh, we are only able to take uh, chats and questions from the WUA platform. So please, I recommend all particip participants uh, to put their questions on the WUA platform so that we can take them in case uh, um, the speakers uh, will have the time to reply to them. Um, so and use the chat also for technical difficulties. We have a great support team, technical support team that will help you. Okay, um, then uh, why are we talking about uh, multi-stakeholder and partnerships today? Well, I think that first of all, because uh, the 2030 agenda tells us to do so. Uh, if you think about, and if you look at the SDGs, we have a key SDG, which is the local, which is the um, uh, SDG 7 in consideration the partnership for the implementation of the goals as that enabling approach as that enabling action for the implementation of the whole set of goals and we have to take that very much into consideration if we look at the targets of that specific goal we will see that member states when endorsing the 2030 agenda were thinking about policy coherence about multi-stakeholder how about how to engage with the different international community um, uh, that is uh, at advancing, I would say, um, sustainable development together in order to create that harmony for the SDGs to be implemented in a sustainable, inclusive um, way for the future. Uh, that's why we, we want today to talk about multi-level and multi-stakeholder uh, partnerships. 
Um, also because now we are seven years into the implementation of the SDGs. And clearly uh, we have seen and it's widely acknowledged that without local leadership and without local action, the, the implementation of the SDGs is not going to be possible. The 60%, 65% of SDG, SDG targets are directly or indirectly related to the mandate and mission of local and regional governments. And we have seen that the, the key innovation uh, is actually coming from the local level. Those ideas that are transformative and that really are bringing the SDGs into reality for communities and that are changing and that are impacting the way and the life standards of our communities come from the local level. That is why today I think it's important that we talk about how do we harness the potential of these experiences, how do we scale them up at the, at the subnational and national level, and which is the role of the multi-level and the multilateral, sorry, of the multilateral uh, uh, scenario to actually make the most out of these experiences. And uh, it's great that we have now the local 2030 coalition that offers a platform uh, to, uh, to do so. But without further ado, uh, let me introduce you uh, our part today. Uh, we have uh, Nicolas Garbi, Principal Advisor of Madrid City Council, of course, from uh, Madrid. Uh, Mr. Felipe Braga Farhat, uh, Partnership Liaison for the 2030 Agenda within FEDES, uh, which is the Economic and Social Development Council of uh, the Paraná State in Brazil. Uh, we have uh, Laura Kam, the Local 2030 Island Network Coordinator for the Hawaii Local 2030 Hub. And Minerva, Minerva Novero, policy specialist within UNDP's Bureau for Development Policy. So great panel uh, from different levels, bringing different perspectives. And I, we, I hope that you are looking forward as much as I do uh, to hear what our panelists have to say. Again, participants, please remember to put your questions in the WUVA platform. Um, I would uh, like at this point to kickstart the panel by uh, addressing Nicolas first. Nicolas, uh, I think that um, we have been uh, uh, in many panels, uh, many different uh, uh, many different sessions in the past year, months, uh, and uh, discussing how to localize the SDGs, what the city of Madrid is doing. Uh, actually, Madrid is one of the first pilot cities uh, that, that is implementing the Global Human Monitoring Framework. You are now looking at how to um, develop a voluntary local review, and you have recently developed a, an important strategy for the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. In this, whole, in this whole process where you are trying to bring the SDGs and the 2030 Agenda mainstreaming it, I would say, into your strategic planning. How do you ensure that no one is left behind? How do you make to create those partnerships at local level where you bring the different stakeholders uh, into this decision-making process? And are the SDGs uh, helping you to do so? I mean, is the local 2030 agenda a tool that you see is helping you in bringing those stakeholders together, or is actually maybe making it even more difficult? Uh, over to you, Nicolas. Thank you very much, uh, Martino, and uh, thank you actually to all the organizers because actually it's very important uh, for us to have uh, uh, this uh, space uh, in uh, in ECOSOC. I think it's a very important uh, um, um, no, space and also step toward a very uh, let's say, I would say a critical agenda uh, for local authorities uh, uh, this year uh, in, the, in the UN uh, system. So uh, thank you. It's very important for us to, to, to start uh, uh, in, the, in, in ECOSOC. Uh, so, um, I mean, a lot of, a lot, uh, a lot of questions. Um, well, first of all, I, I would say that uh, in, uh, in the case of Madrid, uh, what we define a multi-stakeholder, that it's quite a you know, uh, wide uh, uh, buzzword even, uh, we um, cannot understand the multi-stakeholders 
uh, without uh, multi-level uh, perspective. No? So uh, let's say we take uh, the two dimension always uh, uh, together. Uh, on one end, uh, ensure uh, uh, the, um, the necessary consistency uh, with the actions and in this case uh, even a type of partnership that have uh, the level of governance uh, in which we are embedded uh, in our case is of course uh, the european union uh, the the central government and the, and the region and then of course you know uh, we play with the actors starting from our territorial partners i would say but also playing with the partners that we can have directly or indirectly at other level of uh, government so it's very important to maintain the two dimensions, no? let's say the multi-stakeholder and multi-level, because in reality there are kind of two axes, you know? an horizontal one and a vertical uh, one. So this is uh, an important point uh, um, uh, for us. Uh, of course, uh, um, the 2030 agenda, the new urban agenda in the case of our city, you know, because it's the relevant one, um, uh, are not uh, bringing this uh, the, the multi-stakeholder approach as a novelty, but uh, because actually we already, of course, as all the territories, you know, base our work on partnerships. Uh, but uh, it's true that uh, it gave us the opportunity, uh, thanks to uh, uh, this common language, uh, this common metrics, you know, that are uh, represented in the reflected in the 2030, um, to actually. Uh, put together peace partnerships that normally were not working uh, together. No? So it's an opportunity uh, to create new synergies uh, in terms of uh, uh, partnerships, thanks to uh, this common language and metrics that uh, provide us the 2030 uh, agenda. So this is, uh, it's, uh, the, 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 let's say, added value. Uh, now, um, how we, we proceed? We, we, we proceeded actually uh, starting, of course, as, uh, uh, with uh, um, a, a mapping of the actors and the structures of dialogues that were, were already existing. Uh, so, of course, uh, um, the, the will was to involve uh, it's not easy to categorize, but to make it very, very basic. The private sector, uh, the, the academia, uh, civil society, including NGOs, uh, etc., and uh, our uh, grassroots and neighborhood uh, association, not just to make it very, very, very easy. But it's, of course, it's much more complex. Uh, so, actually, in reality, for uh, each type of partnership, we were already counting on some spaces form formally uh, structured of dialogue. Uh, so um, what uh, we needed to do uh, is uh, was actually to uh, create and propose uh, a, a methodology for these different partnerships that were already existing to work together uh, in a new uh, uh, framework. Uh, but actually explaining, because this is, was actually the bottleneck that was present, uh, that we were not asking to do additional work, uh, but actually we were uh, there just to channel the already existing uh, work and translate it. Uh, and this is the first uh, no, step, let's say, translate what they were doing in terms of contribution of SDGs uh, in uh, um, the work that the municipality as municipality uh, is doing. Uh, in this sense, we passed from localization to territorialization of uh, SDGs. Uh, and uh, let's say the first step uh, was actually very easy, uh, theoretically, that is the following. Uh, we have uh, um, no, a, a, a municipality. Uh, we have done our work of alienation of the objective of uh, and budget, uh, policy objective and budget of the municipality with the one of the 2030 uh, agenda. So actually we, were ask, we are asking to our partners uh, through this uh, common co-created methodology uh, to channel their contribution to the implementation of SDGs but following the alignment of the city. So it's not the general uh, part, uh, I don't know, private set enterprise or academia to the 23rd agenda. No, is uh, uh, the partner uh, contributing to how the municipality is contributing uh, to the to the 23rd agenda. No? And uh, so that's what I call territorialization uh, in, uh, let's say, um, a structured, legitimate, and uh, no uh, transparent, uh, uh, let's say, uh, manner. 
because this actually uh, and uh, here let's say is the the the, the step uh, that we can we were still not in it but uh, that we foresee uh, in the next years uh, that is actually maybe the most interesting thing for the city itself no? uh, that is the following if we are able uh, to create um, a space of dialogue that can uh, join together different type typology of partnership of the city in the territory uh, and uh, we can uh, quantify and so that's why metrics are fundamental otherwise i mean the partnership would not uh, be sustainable so uh, if we can measure the real contribution of a partner uh, to the public uh, policies and investment uh, this can create a new uh, type of partnership uh, so that's the interesting, uh, let's say, you know, aspect. Just to make an example, uh, if uh, I have an enterprise uh, operating in the territory of the municipality uh, that uh, is investing uh, uh, in projects that are actually contributing to, I don't know, reduce CO2, just to say a, pri a big priority of the city. Um, but this is registered, uh, is recorded, the first of all, and recognized the first of all in this uh, uh, SDG uh, work and uh, even maybe reflect in a VLR, etc. But actually, the import, the interesting part could be that uh, uh, we have applied metrics that uh, gave us the possibility to have an evidence to maybe recognize and give something in return uh, uh, to the partner in the sense that uh, uh, this uh, investment can be recognized uh, in the form of, uh, I don't know, priority criteria in public procurement, uh, can be recognized in some uh, uh, fiscal measures that can favorize this type of investment, etc. And the same applies for NGOs operating in the territory, etc. So we see uh, the process, uh, again, of localization uh, as a great opportunity to reinforce uh, the work of the municipality. And for this, we thought that uh, it was much more fruitful to uh, enlarge the action from localization to territorialization in the sense that uh, I have uh, uh, mentioned. Of course, the big challenge here, I, I, I maybe probably I guess I don't have more time. Uh, it's very important to have a methodology uh, to propose uh, together, of course, with a chronogram, you know, uh, and then to validate it together. That's uh, an important thing. And especially not create a new structure, but build up building up on the on the existing uh, one. So this is for us at the end, it's an accelerator of our work and the possibility to improve our uh, policies and investment at municipal level. Thanks a lot, Nicolas. Very, very insightful uh, uh, comments and experiences as usual. I love, uh, I really like the transition from localization to territorialization and the fact that you mentioned you know, the work that is happening horizontally as well as vertically with the stakeholders, the territorial level, with the different spheres of uh, uh, government. And as far as understood, really the SDGs are giving you the, this possibility of um, gathering your territorial stakeholders around your strategies uh, and uh, to channel uh, their intervention towards the city strategy that ultimate, ultimately is uh, aimed at implementing the SDGs. So really it's the, it's the power of the local government in gathering the, ter the territory in implementing the SDGs. So this local action that goes directly uh, to the global one. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, thanks a lot, Nicolas. And we will come back to the uh, to a couple of issues uh, that you have uh, mentioned. Um, I'm, I'm switching now to another uh, panelist, uh, Mr. Felipe Braga Fahart, uh, Partnership Liaison Officer uh, for the 2030 Agenda within uh, the uh, Paraná State Council for Economic and Social Development. Uh, Felipe, um, I think that um, listen to, to what Nicolas is saying from a fitting perspective. Uh, now, in the case of Panara, the national governments are kind of the bridge, you know, the bridge gap between the central government and local communities. And the Paraná has identified a very comprehensive strategy for uh, localizing the sustainable development goals. And at the same time, Paraná is also one of the local 20, the hubs of the local 20 uh, 30 coalition. Uh, based on, in your experience, we have heard from Nicolas a bit of the practices. Uh, from a subnational government perspective, how can you facilitate the creation of partnerships 
among different stakeholders and specifically across levels, how the international government can facilitate this. And in your work, are these partnerships um, uh, helping you in implementing the 2030 agenda? Over to you, Philippe. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you and greetings, everyone. First of all, on behalf of the government of Paraná State, I want to thank the UN Habitat team for this opportunity, especially Francine, who invited me to this event. We recognize the UN Habitat's work in engaging cities. In, it's an honor and a great joy for me as a partnership liaison for the 2030 Agenda to be able to share some examples, some of our state's experience in implementing our local agenda. And of course, I'm also excited uh, to learn from my fellow colleagues here. I really appreciate, Nicholas, what you said about uh, it doesn't matter what university or ent some enterprise are doing, but what they are doing related to the municipalities. This is a very good point. I'm Philippe Farhat, and I'm working on the Paraná State Council for the Economic and Social Development, which you call by its acronym SEDES. And this council is chaired by the state governor, Mr. Carlos Massa, and coordinated by its vice president, Ms. Kelly Guimarães, who I advise. Our council is made up of all secretaries, and the mission of its mission is implementing the local agenda. Uh, initially, I must say, we didn't start in 2015. Uh, I must say, uh, the Paraná has already made a significant commitments to Agenda 21, which was launched uh, during the Earth Summit held here in Brazil in 1992, uh, followed by significant engagements during the MDG period. With regards to enabling multi-sectoral partnerships for the sustainable development, at the local level, our topic for today, I'd like to divide our story into two parts. Firstly, we decided to internalize most of our partnerships with the objective of providing a clear structure. In fact, our first step was to create a team made up with the key actors for what we need at that time. And we developed a Paraná with an eye on the SDGs strategy. This, we then we call up on our Paraná state company responsible for producing socioeconomic data uh, to develop a framework of local indicators aimed at to the SDGs. Another state company developed a business intelligence tool so that we can show each and every mayor in Paraná in almost a playful way, a picture of his or her own municipality in relation to the scope to the SDGs. Regarding this, every six months, we produce a report called SDG mission for each mayor to follow up. Our IT company has also developed a best practice portal where any citizen, university, company, or government agency can share what they are doing related to the achievement of the global goals. They also helped us to develop a program called SDG Art, and I'll give you two examples of how it works. Personally, I participate of these two examples, and I really appreciate it. Firstly, we called up on 17 talent painters from Paraná State and asked each one to choose a goal and to represent this goal with their own way. Secondly, we invited dancers from the renowned Guaira Theater located here in our capital, Curitiba, and asked each dancer to choose a goal and to do a one minute performance relating to that specific goal. Through this type of unusual and creative partnerships, we have managed to engage a large part of the population who would not normally be aware of the SDGs. Also, during the planning phase, we made a comprehensive move to involve all, our, our, all of our 399 uh, municipalities. And 381 of them have signed a pledge to align their policies with the 2030 agenda. In second phase of our strategy, we are working at that moment uh, we are focused on helping municipalities. That's why, Nicolas, I appreciate what you said. 
regarding partners and the, the municipalities. And we, we are focused in, in helping municipalities to make changes based on, the specific, on their specific needs. Also here in Curitiba, we work with the Youth Action Hub, a group of students created by an initiative of UN National Conference on Trade and Development. And these partnerships help us to spread the 2010 agenda by promoting important dialogue among young people and encouraging development of local projects. Another example is the partnerships we made with an institution that monitors how public money is spent. Although all the institutions are present all over the world, partnerships with them are, for achieving the global goals are rare. In Paraná State, a State Council of Accounts team proposed a methodology for align a plan, the, the plan policies with the SDGs and their targets. This helped to internalize the SDGs, the agenda into the state government for all secretaries. In addition, this unit has also started to apply the knowledge of the SDGs to carry out its own audits and to evaluate the effectiveness of the government policies based on the SDGs. About international partnerships, we recently signed an MOU between UNITAR and WFO, the World Family Organization, to start a major project in Paraná to empower leader, local leaders. We are committed to bringing our experience and resources to engage and support our municipal leaders. CIDES also benefits from our strong academic partnerships with the seven state universities existing across Paraná. These partnerships have uh, resulted in more than 2,000 research, innovation, and community-based projects linked to the SDGs, and will continue to bear fruits in the future. And before I finish, I'm proud to say that Paraná State is one of the 11 OECD pilots in the world that are part of its territorial approach to the SDGs program, and we are learning a lot from it. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Philippe. I mean, fantastic examples. So thank you for bringing all those concrete experiences to the table. Um, your experience is very valuable and you have touched upon different, uh, uh, really different dimensions, the international agreements, the work with the youth. But I, I, I would like to, I would like just to, to strengthen a couple of points. The first one that I loved, which is the, how you managed to brought communities together around art and culture. In this sense, we have been talking a lot uh, in the past few months about how the power of culture that has suffered a lot during this pandemic can really be a way to bring our communities together, to bring the different parts of the society around uh, the goals uh, and the concept of sustainability. Thank you for sharing those experiences and beautiful also to see how you, you have managed to kind of pledge and, 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 and drive the work of the municipalities of, of, para, uh, of, of the state around the SDGs and, uh, and, and pushing, not pushing, support, supporting them in, uh, in aligning to, to development goals. Um, uh, thanks. We will come back to those uh, to a couple of those points as well later. Um, I will uh, I will switch to uh, to our third panelist now, Miss um, Laura Kam, um, coordinator of the Local 2030 Island Network, and uh, from the Hawaii Local 2030 Hub. Laura, we have been uh, in contact, uh, sharing experiences in the past months, in the past year. Uh, uh, the local 2030 and Hawaii in growth uh, is a well-known sustainability hub. Uh, you have been working with different partners, uh, both nationally as well internationally, on advancing local solutions. Uh, I think that you have like the context of Hawaii is, is very complex with the different islands, but also communities and cultures uh, melted into into that into that geographical complexity how did you work to, to reflect the voices uh, and, and priorities of the different stakeholders uh, in in your work and in the support that you have been given to the to the to the state government uh, and uh, how this has translate, translated into initiatives for the implementation of the 2030 agenda thank you Laura over to you 
Thank you, Martino. And um, I guess I'll just begin by sharing a little bit about our experience in Hawaii, recognizing that um, each community and location um, needs its own place-based framework. And um, so what I'll be sharing with you today is what worked for us. Um, and hopefully that there are some lessons that can be applied to other places. So in background, um, Hawaii Green Growth is a network-based organization that was launched in 2011. It's comprised of over 150 different members from the public sector, private sector, and also civil society. And these are members at the organizational and department level. And so together the network in 2014 led by our governor, um, our four county mayors and the Office of Hawaiian Affairs launched the Aloha Plus Challenge, which is our statewide sustainability framework for 2030. Um, the Aloha Plus Challenge encompasses six goals, um, clean energy transformation, local food production, solid waste reduction, natural resource management, smart sustainable communities, and green workforce and education. And after the SDGs were launched, the Aloha Plus Challenge was recognized as a framework for the local implementation of the SDGs here in Hawaii. Um, and then also in 2018, our network was recognized as one of the local 2030 hubs. And we're really appreciative of the partnership with Global 2030 Coalition. So following the launch of the Aloha Plus Challenge, we underwent a three-year stakeholder convening process to figure out now that we have these six goals, how exactly are we going to measure it? And how does the community find value in what we're doing? And how can we see that we're actually making progress on these goals? And so we developed something called the Aloha Plus Dashboard, um, which I can share with you all afterwards. And the, on the Aloha Plus Dashboard, it has over 200 metrics and indicators that we went around to the different communities um, statewide to figure out what, um, how do you measure a smart, sustainable community? How do you measure whether we're making progress on green workforce and education um, and such goals? And so we can, continue this convening today through our working group processes um, and other forums to ensure that our partnership successfully continues to reflect the voices and priorities of all of the stakeholders involved. So we hold an annual meeting um, of our members where all of our different members provide representatives to that. And through that, we set our um, our network's priorities for the next three years. This is critical because um, Hawaii Green Growth is not just the secretariat or the staff that's convening it, but it's actually all of the member organizations that are a part of it, really creating that the sense that we all together need to provide um, action forward on the Aloha Plus Challenge, and it's not just the coordinating group. Um, and so all of the priorities that are set during the annual member meeting will be carried out by the partners in their own organizations and it's their responsibility um, also to extend that reach into the communities in which they work. So our three, um, separately from our annual member meeting, we have three working groups. So those convene quarterly. One convenes specifically to um, continually update the dashboard. So um, making the dashboard have new metrics on, for example, gender or other um, areas that we see as current gaps. Um, we have a convening process to identify new metrics for that. Um, that's also led to the ability for us to create our statewide voluntary national or voluntary local review where um, we were able to pull the data off of the dashboard to create um, a an update for everyone to, to see how we're doing. We also convene a policy and legislation working group. So here in Hawaii, we just kicked off um, the 2022 um, legislative session at the statewide level. And for that, we bring together all of our network members um, and those members talk about the different bills they're working on for the session that can help accomplish the Aloha Plus Challenge. And so really we, um, convene and hold space where the, um, the network can come together and uh, decrease redundancies and become more efficient and then go off um, and 
little coalitions of partners can work together on bills. We also have um, a local global next generation working group that is focused on um, hopefully in the future creating a youth advisory council for the Aloha Plus challenge and helping it to be um, youth led so bottoms up not top down. And separately from that, we also convene a sustainability business forum where we bring together our um, 26 of our top CEOs um, to work together on issues such as carbon offsets, um, sustainable tourism, which is one of our main drivers um, of the economy here in Hawaii currently, um, and then also increasing sustainable business practices. Um, and because of this reach, we were able to do things um, such as work with our counties on creating hyper-localized dashboards where citizens themselves can input um, data from the different actions they do from changing the light bulb to um, taking different forms of transportation. All of that can be logged on these hyper-localized dashboards, which roll up to our statewide dashboard and then can provide um, updates on how we're doing uh, with the SDGs with our voluntary local review. And Speaking of COVID, we were also um, able through our network to do a green growth project survey. So um, we sent out a survey to all of our network members to identify what potential green growth projects could um, incoming federal funds um, to help COVID recovery support. And so we um, we were able to get a survey that identified 150 different education and training programs and 9,300 jobs um, that were available to um, be taken up with COVID recovery funds and help accomplish the Aloha Plus Challenge and build back better. Thank you, Martino. Thanks to you, Laura. And uh, I think that I should begin by saying also thank you because I think that in Hawaii it's like uh, 3 a.m. So thanks a lot for uh, for being with us actually in the middle of the night today. Um, and um, also I, I think that really the work uh, the work that you are doing in Hawaii is and with the Aloha Plus Challenge is very very remarkable with the integration of the of the priorities that you have been five the six objectives together with the SDGs and specifically that participatory process. I, I saw I saw a video that you kindly shared with us about that explains the whole process, which is personally remarkable and incredible how you manage to bring communities and all the stakeholders in the in the white territory around uh, those goals, but also involving them in the monitoring. You know, because at the end of the day, it's a bit also what Nicholas was saying at the beginning, you know, we need to uh, gather them around a, 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 a sole strategy, a, a unique objective, so that we are actually able to understand which is the impact of our territory our stakeholders and you have been doing it uh, greatly Laura thanks a lot um I'm, uh, I'm passing the word now to our last uh, uh, guest uh, Minerva Novero which is possibly uh, policy policy sorry Minerva policy specialist uh, within uh, UNDP <laughs> and uh, um I'd say the, the the closest partner within uh, the local 2030 coalition uh, UN habitat and UNDP co-chair the local 2030 coalition, the UN-wide initiative on uh, localizing the SDGs that really aims uh, a bit at what uh, uh, supporting what we are discussing here today. Um, Minerva, I, I'm, I'm thinking that the, the Secretary General report on our common agenda highlights the importance of partnerships, highlights the, the role of local communities, local governments in advancing sustainable development. Uh, what do you think uh, is the the, the, the role of the UN and the multilateral system in advancing these partnerships and how can the local 2030 coalition uh, um, facilitate the work between uh, uh, partners to advance the localization of the SDGs? Over to you, Minerva, and thank you. Thank you so much, Martino. It's a pleasure to be here. Greetings from New York, colleagues. Good morning. It's been a... a uh, a pleasure indeed to, to hear our colleagues who have uh, spoken before me. It's one of these um, events and forums and an opportunity really to hear uh, straight from our partners 
what's going on, what they're doing. And I, even just this morning, I already had in the first 20 or so minutes, methodologies and tools that could really help us in, in what we do. So we look forward to, to learning more about what you have shared. In, in responding to the question, Martino, uh, we would like to, to thank, first of all, the, the close collaboration with the UN Habitat as well. It's, it's uh, an honor to be with you uh, co-chairing the, the Local 2030 Coalition. At UNDP, we see the, the role of multilateral uh, organizations like the UN and specifically UNDP as uh, just exactly what you noted, as, as enabler and facilitator of, of, of partnerships without which achieving what we were established to do would not be possible. So in responding, I would like to, <clears throat> first of all, note how or frame why we see multi-stakeholder uh, partnerships are important, and then um, describe a little bit in our approach and our role, and then the value added by the local 2030 coalition. So we face today really complex challenges. They're immense in magnitude, they're urgent in nature, and they're interconnected and, and interlocking in dimensions. And our colleagues uh, on the panel have already spoken uh, a bit on this. So all of these challenges require all hands on deck. Not just all hands on deck, but really working closely together and uh, on integrated solutions, solutions that are designed for, for lasting impact. The 2030 agenda and the new urban agenda, <clears throat> they, they provide a frame for the, the global challenges and priorities that we need to act on together. And there are goals and targets there that, that we need to keep an eye on. And the urgency is, is there, and Martino has already alluded to it. We're halfway through uh, the 2030 mark, it's only eight years away. And so we need more uh, efforts and, and more partners on board, given also the, the challenges that uh, have been complicated and compounded further by the pandemic. <clears throat> and on this, I must commend our, our local partners, in fact, because they have been the frontliners in, in the fight against COVID, especially those who are working at the city level who are, that have been the epicenters of the pandemic. So the crisis, unlike any other that we have seen in the United Nations history, as, as it has been called, has unraveled decades of sustainable development gains. So we need to recover from, from all these setbacks and get back on track to, to 2030. So to ensure recovery that is um, truly inclusive, resilient and long lasting, we need to be decisive in our efforts and, and really leverage all resources that we have and intellectual capital that we have. The UN Secretary General, you will recall in September, 2021, and Martino, thank you for referencing this, in, in our common agenda, he presented two scenarios before us. One of breakdown and perpetual crisis, and the other is breakthrough to a greener, safer future. So in the common agenda, he underlined two urgent options. We continue business as usual, doing the way we have been doing, knowing the outcomes, or averting disaster and, and securing a sustainable future. So the option he called for, which is obviously sustain, sustainable future, that calls for renewed uh, multilateralism, ensuring global decision-making and action that are bold enough to make a difference, that are inclusive and integrated rather than fragmented and fixed, as I said, on long-term goals. Now, among the recommendations received and adopted by the Security, uh, Secretary General in taking forward our common agenda is enhancing partnerships and enhancing the role of local stakeholders in addressing our global challenges and, and priorities. This recognizes, and we have heard it from the beginning of, of the session, the local dimensions of our global challenges and of the global trends and the role of local actors and the need for coordinated action, multi-level. And um, Nicholas has already spoken about this, the vertical and the horizontal need for, for, for coordination. And this also recognizes that multilateral organizations like, like UNDP, UN Habitat, the UN are best placed to, to help make this happen and really need to make this happen in order to achieve the mandates that we have been entrusted with. So how do we do this at UNDP? We engage with our partners at various levels, 
let me speak first on the programmatic side. As you know, UNDP is 175 countries and territories. We have a lot of efforts going on uh, everywhere across regions. And we ensure that we, and we need to do more of this, we consult with our local partners when we develop these programs to ensure local context, to ensure that those who need to be part of the solutions are there. And we do know, just as we have heard uh, in just minutes ago, the various tools, methodologies, intellectual capital that our, our partners at the local level have in order to, to achieve what we need to do. So we also ensure uh, the spaces like this one, where we can consult, where we can have a, a dialogue. And it's not just for us to discover out there who is doing what, but, but really to have a systematic way for, for knowledge exchange and for helping inform national to, to global action or from the local to national to global and to make sure that they are really anchored in, in local context, as I said. The alignment is always a challenge and from the local to the national knowing the priorities and they differ context to context and it's necessary to, to make sure that our eye is, is on the, the horizon where we need to be. So as I said, critical to, to get this done in a systematic way. And this is where the local 2030 coalition actually is, is um, very, um, not only catalytic, but quite revolutionary. In fact, people might think that why didn't we do this much earlier? We have a lot of coalitions that have helped us a great deal, but at the global level, we didn't have that mechanism and, 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 and push and, and support across the board. For, for making that happen in, in a very, very um, systematic way, as I said. Now, it creates coherence, as colleagues have already noted, across uh, partner profiles from business to government to civil society, but not just that. It's also important to us on our side where we sit because it provides us, the, the enables us the, the mechanism for coherence also in what we do across the UN. So across the agencies working on SDG localization, for instance. So the added value of the 2030 coalition is immense. We, we, we do realize that, and this is the core that I, knew, I don't need to, to preach to, but um, ad advancing the integrated approach that is fundamental to achieving both the SDGs and the new, one, new urban agenda is, is going to be uh, a challenge in itself Having the coalition uh, in existence, it doesn't stop there. In fact, it is a, a really good beginning for making sure that the collaboration goes forward as, as designed. It's very nature and structure, in fact, ensures that, that coordination, coalition, uh, diversity, and ensures that, that um, um, unified voice and ensures that opportunity for all uh, stakeholders to, to have the same opportunity to, and to raise their voice. So we build local capacities also for a future tied to global shifts, local capacities from the local communities to the, the governments. And we have seen they have borne much of the pressures during COVID and they need more support from, from all partners. And we are delighted, as I said, to co-chair the, the local 22 coalition with UN Habitat. Thank you. Thanks to you, Minerva, for the very comprehensive uh, for the very comprehensive insights. And um, um, I, I'm going to pick up um, from one line that you've mentioned: be the the role of the UN multilateral system in uh, um, uh, uh, in providing spaces for local and regional governments, local communities, local initiatives at local level to actually um, discuss, exchange, but also um, share experiences and inspire, you, right, you mentioned the, the work of the UN itself. To be honest, being, I've been working on my SDG localization for the past uh, almost 10 years of my life at this point, uh, and uh, all the innovation and everything that we know comes from the local level. We are not reinventing the wheel. We are just gathering, systematizing, and, and then resharing. So the, the real value and what, what, what we have been doing at within, within the UN itself comes from our local part. 
another another mechanism of multi-level partnership here also within the UN itself. And uh, thanks also for, uh, for, for mentioning the work of, of Local 2030. I think we will have many occasions in the, in the long roadmap of events that we have in 2022 to engage in the context of the, of, of the renewed coalition uh, that I all invite to uh, join. Now, colleagues, we had in mind to have to go actually a bit beyond with a different set, set of questions. Actually, um, we have five minutes left because we should be closing at 50. We have some five minutes left uh, that we can take uh, and that we are granted from the colleagues of, uh, of, of, the, of, of, the, of, the, of the partnership forum. So I will uh, uh, kindly ask you partners, the speakers, uh, to in one minute, uh, what you would bring home, which is the message that you would like to pass to our participants today, uh, to the colleagues that have joined us in, into the debate, which is the added value of multi-level and multi-stakeholder partnerships. What is the message that you would like to pass today? What would you like to leave and what would you like our participants to go home with? And I will start with Minerva, so we, that we go at uh, uh, backwards this time. <laughs> Uh, from our end, uh, Martino and colleagues, we would really hope that to see the coalition and all local to global coalitions and collaborations to remain and in, become even more meaningful. Getting together is not the is not the end point. So getting together is just a start, especially for for a coalition like the local 2030 coalition. And we need to ensure that our collaboration together is indeed coherent. The way we operationalize our, our collaboration is important and meaningful for, for all stakeholders and obviously focused on impact at the local level. Thank you, Minerva. Thanks a lot. Uh, Laura, over to you. Um, I would like to share just the importance of having um, trust-based relationships um, as we're building these coalitions and coming up with goals together. We all need to um, find things in common that we can agree on and focus on that in order to move action forward and not get hung up on um, making perfect the enemy of the good or making sure that, um, yeah, we need to focus on what we can do together um, rather than our differences. Absolutely, very well. And let me add uh, on this point that one plus one is not equals two, one plus one is equal five. Okay, so the, the part, the power of the partnerships and the strength and the focus on what we can achieve together is, is much more when we come together as partners. Felipe, over to you and the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Listen, uh, I think we have males with a lot of needs and municipalities with a lot of problems and they are waiting for our answers. They are a bit loose with the pandemic, with a lot of problems that they are facing in your daily. And here in the room, for example, we have a lot of knowledge and the audience also. So for me, the, the hurt of the story is uh, find a, a manner to, to touch the hurt of the mayors and to help, really help them to face what they are expecting from us. Because UNDP, UN Habitat, SEDES, everything, uh, there is no sense or nothing of this if you are not there and listen to them and try to pass our experience to them. And we are, I'm sure that we are capable for that. Absolutely, absolutely, Philippe. And I, and I think if I, if I can extract something from what you're saying, you're touching upon the very important concept of ownership. So how can we how can can we en enhance the ownership of the agenda itself at the municipal level through the work that you are doing? And again, partnerships, building together, working working together across levels can help us in uh, fostering the ownership and also the political ownership of the agenda itself. Nicolas, uh, the word is yours to close the panel. 
Okay, so I will just continue and building on what you were saying uh, together with Felipe. Uh, I think that uh, an, uh, an incredible added value of partnership is also that it gives uh, sustainability in the long, uh, medium and long term uh, to the work that uh, we are doing as uh, local uh, authorities. And uh, it's really the best antidote uh, against the political uh, changes. Uh, and it's uh, the best multiplier, you know, in terms of uh, having impact and go beyond uh, 2030 even. Thank you, Nicolas. Um, we have come to the end of this uh, very interesting panel. Thanks a lot. We have touched upon many different issues uh, from different perspectives, lots of experiences. I mean, the amount of information that you have shared with us on what you're doing, what you're aiming to do, with whom you are doing, how you're doing, it's, 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 it's just incredible. I think uh, I, I won't try to summarize everything. Uh, but I think what came out clearly out of this uh, out of this discussion is that uh, collaboration and and the partnership among the different uh, components of society, whether you are a city or a, a state government, uh, you are a, a let's say non-profit entity like Hawaii or even UNDP and the UN itself is key for everything that we are doing, from the beginning to planning to the delivery to the monitoring. Of, uh, of the sustainable development goals. Multi-stakeholder, multi-level partnership are an enabler to achieve uh, and a, an accelerator, I would also say an accelerator for the achievement of uh, the 2030 agenda. I will leave you with a question for a reflection that I hope that we can take in another panel. Uh, in my experience, what is difficult is how can we make partnerships? How can we make participation and inclusion sustainable and structural? How do we move from the ad hoc participation to the structural and sustainable participation of communities? And uh, I will leave you with this, uh, with this, uh, with this, with your thoughts to reply to this question. And I hope that we can take it in the next panel and next discussion. Um, thanks again to the colleagues of ECOSOC, to all of our panelists, and to the UN Habitat team uh, that was behind uh, the organization of uh, of this event, and of course to all participants. Have a nice afternoon, morning, evening. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.